Hi, I'm Helen Powell. I've been serving the Middle Georgia area since 1985. If you would love an exciting career, please call me. Careers in Cosmetology, 129 North Franklin Street, 272-1967. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm an upcoming graduate from Careers of Cosmetology. It's been a wonderful experience, and I encourage you to contact Ms. Helen Powell for more opportunities. Hello, I'm Christy at Careers of Cosmetology. I've recently enrolled here and I'm excited about the opportunities that lie ahead. Hey, my name is Daphne Jackson. I'm excited to be enrolled in Careers in Cosmetology. If you would like this opportunity, contact Careers in Cosmetology. Hi, my name is Caitlin. I've been enrolled in Careers in Cosmetology for about four months now. I'm really enjoying it and I think if this is the career for you, you should definitely come see Miss Helen Powell. Careers in Cosmetology, 129 North Franklin Street. Our number is 272-1967. Give me a call. It's Renee with CSB for you and me. I'm here with Meredith and we're going to talk about some Georgia system of cares. What that means for our child and adolescent programs within our Community Service Board of Middle Georgia. So CSB for you and me. Thank you for joining us Meredith. Thank you. All right so your job, your role for our CSB is kind of behind the scenes right? Yes I am the system of care coordinator for the agency and um, so I work with several of our grants in our child and adolescent department and yeah I do a lot of behind the scenes things. And basically what that means with grants to me, correct me if I'm wrong, is um, you help find the financial support. You find money to help with the needs for our communities. Yes, um, to support our families, to support the youth that we serve, to help them um, in their daily lives to be better and get better because um, a lot of times when you see families that we work with the kids are sometimes struggling because of maybe not having enough food maybe not having um, proper housing and things like that so if we can try to help them with the basic needs of life then sometimes the behaviors also improve so we're not talking about support and like paying for their visits are we helping with medicine? So you're talking about supports, you mean supports across the board, food, what about school supplies, stuff like that? Yes, yes, school supplies, but when you said medication, sometimes we can assist with medication if maybe they've lost their insurance and uh, they need a medication that's gonna help them continue to improve in school, then mm -hmm. sometimes we can assist with that. So this is one-time funding. Right. Um, where we uh, assist the family with whatever is needed um, on a budget, but they try to find out what they need that would help them succeed. Right, I think so a lot of the community members might say, oh, they support, it means I might get a free doctor's visit here or, or that kind of thing. But I think it's important to see that we are worried about children's behavioral health, but we're also worried about if they've ate or right. if they have a pencil or in paper for school. So I think that is a plus. Now does every community service board try to do this? Or are we different? Or is this there are several CSBs throughout the state, I believe, who have the system of care funding. And it's called the system of care expansion grant. And um, it is to assist the families where they are in their community. Um, to provide community-based services, but to support the whole family. It's family-driven and youth-driven um, and culturally and linguistically appropriate for them, whatever is needed for them. They drive it, um, and that's the whole point of have a, uh, having a system of care, is so that we surround the family, wrap them around, and bring in the community partners mm -hmm. that they need in their life, and they bring in the supports they need, so you know, they tell us what they need. I think Marnie has shared with us before about community support and the different programs like DFACS, DJJ, um, even ministries that have helped. So this is another part that's to the table when it comes to children's behavioral health is making sure that they, we are reaching out to them in the community and supporting them in their needs. Like you said, once we help them with their needs, then we're able to focus on their behavior. Or yes. sometimes that fixes their behavior. Right. 
it, yeah, I, that's a great point to make because you don't think about that. You think, oh, behavioral health, your kid's in trouble or your kid's bad, but some situational things that is life that everybody goes through can help and or change or alter a child's behavior. Right. So what, what did you have to do to get this grant? How much work did you have to put into it? We applied with the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities for the System Care Expansion Grant, and um, they offered it for us. They, so they um, sent us our budget, and then we're, you know, required to tell them. Um, most recently, we tell them how much, how many, why. So we tell them, you know, how many people were you able to help? Mm. How much um, support were you able to give? You know, what was the percentage? of um, people that were able to be helped you know what did you do with this this funding to um, support the families and in where they are so you work with the staff to make sure that that's being done then you have reports that you have to send back in yes to the, the department of behavior health and now is this grant something that we'll have for five years or ten years or is this something that's temporary like how much support time wise do we have with this part with this grant? um there's not a timeline on it right now um it is um, renewed currently um starting today july 1st okay. is starts another grant period so um just keep on top of your paperwork yes <laughs> what else would you like the community to know about this grant the system of care and how it works and what we're able to use it for well we're able to use it to support the families where they are um, like I s mentioned before you know if someone maybe needs some assistance with groceries where they say we have enough funding to pay the rent this month but that's gonna leave me short on the, you know a week's mm -hmm. worth of groceries mm -hmm. then we're able to maybe help them but also utilize um, our community support individual workers at that time to s then link them with local food banks or local ministries they may that may have food and give them that assistance you know most of the time if they can tell us um, we're able to do this but that's going to put a short on this and we're usually able to help. try to help mm -hmm. Or at least connect them with community resources that can help. You know, we've also had times where maybe they were able to get, they had some part of the funding and they were able to get their church to support some, but right. they needed that extra hundred dollars, you know, and we're able to say, okay, well, we can help you with that. And and one way that you get that information is through LSCC, right? Yes, Love definitely. Loving Our Community Coalition. <laughs> And the other part, you said, oh, CSI. For those who have been watching, remember we talked about CSI. That is not criminal investigation. <laughs> right. Marnie and I laughed about that. But community support individuals. Yes. And actually, in the next episode or two, you'll hear from a community support individual and a therapist within right. our APEX program. Awesome. So what about the ones who are in our APEX program, the children that we work with in the schools? Are they eligible for support with systems of care? Yes, yeah, sometimes it, the apex therapists work alongside with the community support individual workers, and yes, they will contact me sometimes and have a family in need. Um, it could be something as simple as I was able to sign my child up for um, rec baseball, but I don't yeah. have enough money for cleats. We can assist with things like that that's because a that's idea. a positive outlet, mm -hmm. and we want the children to be involved in whatever they can be involved in. Exercise, sleeping better, those things yes. are all affected even just by playing ball. Right, Yeah. right. So the behaviors often improve when they get on a team. They're able to have that coach mentorship going on, so that's helpful. Um, but yes, the Apex um, staff can also use it. And Sometimes they would utilize it for community outings. Mm. Um, that's another thing. We also utilize the funds for our emerging adult population at the DEN. Right. Um, that's for our 16 to 26 year We've olds. We've learned about them. Yes. So they do um, community outings. They learn how to get jobs. If one of them has a job interview and they don't have any clothes for it, that's something yeah. else that we can oh, yeah. assist them with. Um, if they actually get the job and they have to have a uniform for it. We just recently had um, a young man get a job at um, Zaxby's and needed some work the clothes. Skid boots, the black, you yes. know, you have to have them certain shoes. So we're able like to assist things like that. Whatever's going to assist them and make them successful is what we try to help with because um, often without it, they may not be able to accept the position because mm -hmm. they can't afford, you know, they need the job to make the money and they don't have it ahead of time or they wouldn't need the job. Yes, so. that's a big deal. 
everybody, you have to have experience to have the job. You got to have a job to get experience. So exactly. that is another way that we support each other. Exactly. Um, so we're going to take a break. Okay. Um, and we'll be back with Meredith to talk some more about different ways that we're able to help the community financially support with their behavioral health needs. Find your new Chevrolet and get award-winning dependability only at Dublin Chevrolet. Get employee pricing on all remaining 2018 Silverado models with total savings of over $12,000. These 2018 Silverados won't last, so act now while they're still in stock. If a car is more your style, get over $4,500 in total savings on the 2019 Malibu LS. Call, click, or come see us. Dublin Chevrolet, the only dealer you will ever need. All right, we're back with Meredith, and we're talking about all the different support systems that we have within our programs for our children and adolescents. Meredith, we talked before during the commercial break about how to get started and who is applicable to receive this support. Right. So do we, um, do we, we just go to the clubhouse? No, you don't only have to go to the clubhouse. It can be um, students involved, but it has to be involved in behavioral health services through the CSB of Middle Georgia. So you already have to be enrolled within our services. Yes. But for behavioral health attention. Right. And then you're able to, when there's a need, I guess you talk to your counselor about you talk, it. You can talk to your therapist. You can talk to your community support individual worker. You can talk to your doctor. Um, you can talk to anybody who is over your case, and they'll be able to assist you. Okay. And um, is there, for people who are not signed up for our programs yet, um, what's the address, the phone number, any kind of information for them if a parent's watching and says, oh, I need to get my baby signed up. What do they, who do they call? Okay, they can call 478-275-6850, um, and that's here at our Child and Adolescent Building. That's at 2121A Bellevue Road, building number four. Number four is our Child and Adolescent Building. Um, that, they will, the front desk can connect you to um, our scheduler who will, and her name is Cambry, and mm -hmm. she will set you up for an intake. She uh, may ask you, would you like to come in clinic? She may go ahead and try to set you up at your local school. Um, because we also provide intakes in our school system through our apex therapist right. so that the families don't have to always travel to Dublin. They can stay in their community to get their intake. So I think that's a good point too to say that if you know that this might be something you want your child to be involved in, it's summertime, you might want to go ahead and get them signed up before school, right. get all that paperwork done, the visits, and then when school starts, it's smooth sailing. You'll already be familiar with how the program works. So when that busy season hits and everybody's going back to school, um, we'll be there ready to support you yes. within the community <laughs> with our system of care. Yes. Um, anything else you think might be important to share? Why don't you tell us a story? Can you tell us a story about one of the kids and or someone that you've been able to help support through your work? Okay, we've had um, several families we've been able to assist. Um, we've had children who um, were about to be suspended from school because they were um, having behavioral issues because the family was unable to pay for their medication mm -hmm. and um, all the family had to do was ask and we were able to um, assist with that for the month until their insurance could be um, reinstated and um, the child was able to stay in school. We've had um, families who were without um, bedding and so um, we were able to uh, support the families um, with getting bedding so that the children had somewhere to sleep. I think one of the um, best things we do is when we have children in crisis mm -hmm. and a 1013 has been signed, which means that they have to be transported to a crisis stabilization unit to become stable again, right. maybe for suicidal thoughts or homicidal thoughts, something like that. Um, we're able to assist the families with meals so that they do not have to leave their mm -hmm. child to go get something to eat or they don't have to worry about, or about their family. other kids right. that are back home. Right. So yeah. we're able to um, let them stay here while they're waiting for their child to be transported. Um, and then if we have families who do not live close by, maybe they live in one of our other 
um, um, 15 yeah. counties yeah. that <laughs> aren't Lawrence County. Um, we're also able to sometimes assist with um, clothing. Um, that's a big help because a lot of times they don't realize mm -hmm. when they come in on crisis that they may be hospitalized. And so that's the last thing on their mind is remembering to bring clothes that they'll be able to wear if they Even for the family or the support that's staying with a child, right? Right. Yeah, so. that, that's a big deal because when you are in a crisis, you don't think about all that stuff. And when, when the reality hits and you figure out what the plan is, well, I'm going to have to drive another 30 minutes back home. Then that's gas money and people right. don't have all of that. I mean, I, I don't have all that. When, if, but if I'm in a, in a crisis, yeah, it's a beautiful picture. There's my word again, beautiful. Everything's <laughs> beautiful to me within our programs because we have that extra support. Yeah. Um, what about some needs in the community? Like you said, bedding. I know a lot of ministries that can help with stuff like that, with sheets or pillows, um, food. You've said that we've mm -hmm. helped with food drives or we've needed stuff from food banks. Right. Is there anything specific that you can think of that our community needs to hear or know? Maybe some groups that might want to support you in your work with these children and their families that we could help spread the word. Yeah, I mean, we're always looking for support for our emerging adults and our CSI. Um, we have a clothing closet here that we use that people donate to at times. Um, and that also helps with the kids who go into crisis because sometimes we can just go into our clothing closet right. and we can find their size mm -hmm. and we're able to... Um, assist them with sending them with clothes from our clothing closet. So, hold on. Go look in your closet, because I know your kids have clothes that are two or three sizes too small, or two or three sizes too big that they will never wear because the season's off. I'm not even a parent, I know that. I was good <laughs> in it. Um, and just put them in a box, build them four. It would be a help when, when there's a crisis that arises and you're not able to imagine, put yourself in their shoes. Something happens to your child, you come up here for help, or even even medically, think about if you have to go to the hospital and then you're stuck there for a day or two, to be able to help somebody with just cleaning out your closet is a huge support for our right. community. And we're community-based. Yes. So, what is another thing? Something else in need that you might have? We're always looking for community partners who may need assistance from us also, because our um, part of it is we want to provide community outreach. Right. So our emerging adults are always looking for ways that they can help in the community. Mm -hmm. um, they enjoy taking care baskets to nursing homes. Mm -hmm. To the um, they've also taken care baskets to the hospice wing at the VA, yeah. just to let the veterans know that they care. Um, they've made blankets for families and things like that. So they're always looking for community partners that they can connect with that will allow them to come in. And part of the funding can assist with supplies to make things that your organization may need. Or um, may, you know, if you're, need, if you're in need of extra supplies, then maybe we could uh, put that as a project for our emerging adults or our CSI um, kids that mm -hmm. they can work on to support our community. So if you have a program that you need some volunteers for, you can call, what's the number? 478-275-6850. Or if you need an activity within your program that our, our children or our emerging adults can participate or bring to the table, we'll bring our own supplies, we'll bring everything we need to do it. If you have the idea, give Meredith a call, ask for Meredith, and she will help organize and put that together. It is so important for people to know that we want to be in the community, we'd like to have fun, but, and we also want to support each other. So we are like family. This is our home. Anything else you want to share or got any more information that our viewers may need to know? Um, part of my job is also to connect with community partners because, like I said earlier, we want to build a framework around the family. It's family driven, so I'm always looking for community partners. I attend a lot of um, community partner meetings to connect with them. Um, but another part is um, revamping what we call LIPT, which is a mandated meeting in the state, and that's local interagency planning team. Mm. That's and so that is um, a meeting where 
the community partners come together and there are several mandated partners and um, behavioral health services mental health is one of those mandated partners and to su surround the family is the family's choice if they want to be involved right and they are um, that allows for DFACS, school system, Department of Juvenile Justice, um, vocational rehabilitation, mm. um, to all surround the family and um, offer supports. All right, well, we're going to take a break, and we're going to learn a little bit more about these groups and these different collaboratives and see how you can be involved with our program and how we can help support you. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi, I'm Perry Williamson. We've been serving the Dublin Lawrence community for over 90 years here at Williamson's Bakery. We specialize in donuts, cakes, pies, cupcakes, cookies, birthday cakes. They're our business, not a hobby. And don't forget our large selection of cheese straws. For special orders, contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or better yet, just come get you some. When you stop by, be sure to try our all new Pig in the Blankets. We have bacon, sausage, and chicken. We're located at 1634 Veterans Boulevard, Dublin, Georgia. With the hot, freshest donuts, come to Williamson's Bakery. We proudly support our area athletics. All right, we are trying to wrap up the rest of this show, but there's two or three more things that we want to make sure you're aware of. Part of the system of cares that we um, have within our program is some trainings. Meredith, tell me a little bit about trainings. So I have a little bit of training um, money that can assist with providing training not only to our staff but you know training community partners in what they need going out into the community if the community needs more training on ADHD diagnosis then going into maybe the school or in the community and sharing information about that right. providing staff to train students teachers any community partner um, we do some we have, I'm a train the trainer for Source of Strength, so mm -hmm. some of the schools work alongside us for myself and our other trainers to train their students on how to implement that program to promote strength, not weakness in their schools. All right, so if you're interested in any trainings, we can bring them to you. You can come to join us. Meredith is the person to talk to. <laughs> The phone number is 478-275-6850. If you have a child who wants to be part of our program and needs some behavioral health attention, the phone number is 478-275-6850. If you want to join in on community volunteer work or if you need us or want our children to come to your programs and be on your activities, we will bring the supplies and fund the activity. You need to call 478-275-6850. We're going to have that memorized before the end of the show. <laughs> um, thank you, Meredith, for all the work that you do. Thank you. The hard work, the reaching out to the community, the collaborating with the different businesses, different ministries. What else? Helping kids, coordinating with families of their needs, making sure people in our community eat and sleep and have clothing that's a big deal yes, yes. Um, so I like to share and I always tell people that that is a ministry in itself so we are doing God's work and we are also doing CSB work CSB yes. for you and me so stay tuned and know that you will see Meredith's face again because Meredith has her hands and wears many hats has her hands in many pots so there will be other topics, other points of our services that she will be able to help us understand more. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on CSB for you and me.